don't know if you guys can even hear my music or I've got my Bluetooth on and I've got my um, E-L-E-X-A connected to my Spotify. And so I don't know if you're gonna get any audio on this, but I'm just gonna roll with the punches. And if you can't hear me, I'm hoping someone will let me know. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about um, like practical stuff that you can do. I'm not a makeup artist, but I get the job done well for my boudoir sessions, and I feel like I can bring those tips to you and actually give you something that you can work with and that you can do. Um, so, one second. Let's first talk about complexion or um, applying the foundation because when I first started shooting boudoir, um, if you go back and you look at my old work, what I did was I didn't shoot for my own personal style. I didn't shoot because I wanted to change the what the beauty industry um, perceived as beautiful or whatever. I shot for the client and I wanted to shoot images that would make the client feel good. For no other reason was I shooting. So I shot very bright and airy images. Um, I noticed when I did my peep show after after the sessions and stuff like that, those are the images that people liked of themselves and those are the images where the skin looked great and um, that's what I kind of rolled with. So when I started shooting the more lighter, airy style, because that was the most flattering way, I noticed a couple things about my foundation when I was choosing it and applying it to my clients and stuff like that. And so that's what I'm gonna go over. Um, and this can apply to if you have to put on your own makeup for a boudoir session, and this can also apply if you're taking sexy selfies of yourself um, for this group, or if you're in the digital tees and you're kind of doing your own thing. So let's take a look at my two colors. You guys know I love self tanning and stuff like that. So my skin tone fluctuates. Um, so I purposely did not put any self tanner on today because I wanted to kind of take you through what I do for my foundation. So um, I use the RCMA. If you go to RCMA, all letters, .com, you can go and you can get some uh, sample size of these foundation, I believe, and it's like $2.50 and that includes the shipping. Um, and I think you can get like two of them to kind of test them out and stuff like that. But RCMA has been the most photogenic makeup I have ever found. Um, the only other one I've been wanting to try, but I'm kind of nervous because it's it's expensive, is the Mascara Beauty one, but I'm kind of skeptical, obviously, because it's part of a company and stuff like that. So what I'm gonna do is, this is Shinto 2. This is the color I usually use, and I usually use it when, hey, I see you guys hopping on. I hope you can hear me. I've got my Bluetooth attached, so um, I'm trying to keep my tunes jamming so I can stay upbeat today. But anyways, this is the Shinto 2. This is the color that I'm normally using for my foundation, and then this is Shinto 1. Uh, this is the one I'm going to use to kind of blend up today. So if you plan on taking your own image and you like those bright images and you shoot that brightness up whenever you're editing them and stuff like that, go a shade darker. Since I don't have self tanner on, Shinto 2 is going to be my darker tone. And again, if you go to rcma.com, you can get sample sizes for like $2.50. Um, I love it because it's wax based for one and for two when it since it's wax based when it warms up to your body temperature It smooths out and it looks photoshopped and that's why I love it. So um, What I'll do if I want to shoot bright and airy images, and I know I want to turn that brightness up I'm going to go a shade darker than my skin tone So I'm just gonna do that really quick, and then I'm gonna show you how I blend it and stuff like that if you are um, somebody who likes more moody pictures, kind of like the tone I've been going into lately, um, you match your uh, match your face skin to your legs because your legs are usually the most pale, and you want your skin to look even. So, shoot! All right, I'm just gonna prime my face really quick. I got this new Too Faced primer that I want to try, but I'm not doing a full face today, so I don't want to waste it. All right, cool. We just gonna get down to business. All right, so I'm just gonna do this cheap because we all got things to do today. All right, and I'm gonna show you. All right, so obviously you guys see how that does not match my skin tone completely, and if I turn my light off, you'll be able to see it a lot more. Let me go over to the window really quick. Okay, so 
when it's darker and just in the natural light, you can see how this will definitely create a line on my chin. But that doesn't matter if you're gonna boost the lightness or the brightness of your image after. But what I would do, all right, so you can see my neck. What I do so that I can blend that, so even in my picture, even if I'm taking that brightness up like that, I want to avoid a line because it's super hard to get rid of in post-editing. If you're on your phone or even if you're in Photoshop, it's hard to do. So I'm gonna take a look at my Shinto One right here, my lighter color, and then I'm gonna blend that Shinto One just down here, down my neck. And I'm gonna mix my Shinto Two and my Shinto One so that it creates a gradual, um, duh, we're, we're shading, we're coloring, we're blending stuff. So, I mean, you guys get that. And then when I turn on my light, you can't really tell that it's off. So let me go ahead and get the rest of this on my face. And then um, I wanna go over complexion stuff because I'm gonna show you how, ooh, what is going on here? How you can keep your face looking 3D because when we're dealing with portraits, obviously we're turning a three-dimensional uh, uh, object, us, into a two-dimensional object. So I wanna show you things you can do with your complexion to kind of keep the 3D look once you take the image. So let's just finish this really quick. And I'm assuming everybody could hear everything fine because nobody said anything. All right. And then pay attention when you're doing your foundation too. I usually just like get into that hairline, especially for people with thinner hair. I have thinner hair. Hey crew. All right. So I'm just gonna go over this with my darker shade because we're assuming that we're gonna brighten our image afterwards for anyone who's just hopping on. And then to avoid that line on the bottom of my neck, I'm gonna go in with my lighter shade and just blend that in so you don't see it. Okay, to keep this super, super practical, I'm just gonna go over some stuff really quickly with you. So I do not contour, I don't like it. I, this is the same way that I use on every single client. I use this formula, this technique, and it works for everybody. When you work with contouring, you gotta like know their face shape and stuff like that. I'm not a makeup artist, so this is the way that I found works with everybody. So I'm taking a brush, it looks like this, and it kinda has an angle um, on it, and it's nice and fluffy. And I am taking the NYX Matte Bronzer. I actually used this color on my spooky session the other day and her skin tone is completely different from mine. She has cool undertones and she has paler skin. So this color, uh, Deep Tan, will work for pretty much any skin tone in like the white folks spec spectrum. Um, but yeah, all right, so I'm gonna use the flat side and right here on the side of my face, like right here where my ear is, unless your ear is like abnormally located, like way above your eye, I just start at this top part where my ear is. So I'm just gonna tap, 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 tap down. I'm gonna do that. And then once I know that I have only an excess amount of bronzer, I'll just blend it. It takes all the like scariness away from contouring and contouring in the right areas finding your cheekbones and all that stuff. So let me turn this down a little bit. This is like way bright. There we go. Okay, that's good. All right, awesome. So obviously, oh, and when you tap it, so I dip it, when you tap it, tap it this way so that the product goes into your brushes um, and not out of your brushes because that way when you press down harder and stuff like that, it makes the building process a lot easier so I'm just gonna do this side of my face really quick so you can just see really quick and I like to um, my face is very square so I like to bronze a lot on the side right here so it creates that depth 
So whenever you're bronzing and contouring, basically what you're doing is you're making sure that your face still looks three-dimensional um, in, in pictures and like in real life and stuff. So for my bronzer, on the chin part, I'm gonna make sure that I go like underneath my chin. There was a time when I was just going right here on the side and like it just looked kind of funny. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm getting on this part and then back here too. Awesome. Okay, now since I do know that some people do struggle with the way that their neck looks and they don't like it, what you can do to make your neck look slimmer is you can take a little bit of bronzer and then you see where your neck kind of goes in right here. Lightly build into that area to create kind of a shadowy contour there and it will make your neck look thinner. And of course we can get into like body sculpting and all that shiz and we can like make our collarbones look deep and all that stuff but this is the basics and then usually what I'll do instead of contouring my nose I'll dip it super super light in here and then I will just dab it on my nose. Y'all can see my nose is super pointy so I don't really have to do anything and I'll just just really light and just build it onto that part. Now for the blush, I'm super excited for this part because creating like that um, more dimensional look for your, your blush and your bronzer and stuff like that. I just got this little sample thing at Ulta yesterday when I bought the Better Than Sex mascara and it's perfect. I'm gonna try it out. If the color doesn't look good on me, don't worry about that. The, the whole plan behind it still stands. So if you want to create more um, like dimension to your cheeks with your blush, what you're going to do is you're going to take the blush blush part and you're going to um, do it on your apples like you would any normal blush. But then when you're, what you're going to do is you're going to take that peach blush and then you're going to do the rest of it. So on that same area, so we got the bronzer and then the blush here. So the blush just here will be the pink and then the peach will be here and it's gonna create some dimension. So let's see, I don't know how pigmenty or anything the Too Faced brand is, but we gonna see. Can you see it? Yeah, it's getting a little peachy, all right. We're gonna get a little crazy just so we can like see what's going on here. All right. All right, and with blush, I like to use the blush on my clients most definitely. One, because if you're using flash or obviously if you're cranking up that brightness and stuff, your face is gonna get washed out. That's another reason why I chose a darker shade for my foundation. Um, but with the blush, blush just makes you look healthy and radiant and um, like even if you take your pictures, a really great like rule of thumb is to like jog in place or like move your body or dance or jump up and down and get your blood pumping and it gives you that radiant looking glow. So like especially with my sessions, I like to do a lot of laughing because it just gets people comfortable, it gets like their blood going, and you know, everything kind of flowing right. Okay, I think that's good now. I can finally start seeing some stuff going on there. So let's get this part. It's a little sample size. It's like way small for my brush, so <laughs> I'm having to build a lot. All right. Okay, and then to the side. So back here, like this is where the pointy part of my cheekbone is, and that's kind of where I'll start. And it kind of gives it a little bit more dimension and blends out the blush and all that kind of stuff. Okay. There we go. Hard to see inside this little, the, the camera, not in a mirror. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But yeah, that is pretty much like the basic rule of thumb that I use. So you're gonna bronze, not contour, um, take it from the top of your ear here, boop, 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 blendy, blendy, blendy. Whenever you do your blush, you're gonna put the blush on your cheekbone and then use a peach blush to go backwards so that it kind of helps frame your face. Oh my gosh, okay, so it helps 
frame your face without taking all the dimension and stuff like that because we still want to see like your cheekbones and all that stuff. And then for foundation, if you want to go bright on your images or if you know there's going to be lots of flash involved, um, use a shade darker so that you don't look washed out. And then if um, you're going to a photographer or you plan on editing your images in a more dark and moody manner or if you're shooting at a lower exposure, make sure you're matching up your foundation to the legs or like the palest part of the body if it's like a big part of the body. So I'm gonna turn this off. I'm just gonna walk over to the natural light really quick. Just to take a ganda. All right. My life is a mess. Okay. There we go. Okay, now that it's darker, you can kind of see. So I didn't go light on the bronzer and then the bronzer I took down here. Slim your neck by going right here inside those little creases and bam, that is the formula that I use for everybody's face. That way I don't have to look dumb whenever somebody comes and maybe they don't have the same facial structure as me. Um, I know for sure it'll work for you because everyone always loves their makeup. I have not had one person that didn't like their makeup yet. So I hope that helps you, does something for you, brightens your day. Like, don't let me be wasting my time on this live. <laughs> and today what we're doing is we are, um, for my selfie challenge picture, it's going to be taking an image using flowers or your... Um, scent of choice or whatever and we're going to be using it to um, frame frame the picture so I'm going to get on that now and I'll be posting it in just a second thanks for hopping out here bye <laughs>